Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about list arrays and maps. So Dart provides two additional generic types that we can use on top of our primitives uh, that are called lists or arrays as more commonly thought of and maps. And we're going to start by looking at a, at a list basically or an array as most people would think about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this line here. And we're going to create a new list of integers. Now, lists are ordered in the same way that they are instantiated. So 1, 2, 3 will come out 1, 2, 3 if we do decide to print it. Uh, and they can dynamically grow and shrink. So we can add and remove items, uh, unlike a traditional array that you would use in other languages. So we could go list.add and add 4, which in the context of the list, if we do actually print, which nothing will come out, but what we'll do is we'll go print list for now so you can sort of see what I mean. We should end up with one, two, three, four. Now this doesn't reorder them based on what kind of variable they are. So if we go two, one, three, four, it's not like we'll end up with one, two, three, four. We'll end up with the same uh, order that we place them into the array. So then we can go list dot add five, and we should end up with a fifth element of five. Now. As Dart is statically typed, we can only add integers to a list that's defined as an integer list. If we tried to add a double to this list, uh, we'd get an exception thrown. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we went list.add 3.14, and then we tried to run this, we'd find that we'd get a basically an exception thrown of argument double cannot be assigned to the parameter type int. Now, since Dart is also zero-based indexed, when we are accessing the list to print it, we need to remember this. So I'll remove this item here. And what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna go back to where we started here, where we have our one, two, three. And say we wanted to access the, uh, the second element in the list. So we wanted to access this two here. We'd need to type within our print statement list square bracket and then one because we're actually indexed from zero so zero is equal to the first item the second item is equal to one and the third item is equal to two so if we print this we should get two printed out fantastic and yep as i said if we tried for a zero we should get one printed now how do we actually iterate over a list Let's go back to our base list. We can use a traditional for loop if we wanted to. So we could do a for var x. So just saying for something x in our list, print x. And this is sort of the traditional way that you see a lot of people would program um, because it's probably the easiest way to output all three variables. However, there's a few different ways you can do this. For example, if you still wanted to use a for loop, but you wanted to be very explicit with uh, what you wanted to work with, so you maybe you wanted to limit it to the first item or the second item, you could go for var i equals zero, i is less than list.length i plus plus. This is basically saying i plus one across the entire array until we get to the max length, and then print less list i. So i is equal to the index of the list we want to print. So if we run this, we should get one to three. However, say that we only wanted the, la the second and the third variables, we could set i to be one to start with. And then we print, we only get the second items. We can also use, and this is probably the more preferred way to iterate over a list, but we can use uh, the functional approach. So we can do a list dot for each and then we can say for each x, print x. And then we'll run it. And we get the output. This is also a very, very typical um, way you'll see being used um, other than the first one where we just did a var x in list. Uh, this is probably the second most popular one you'll see uh, as it provides a few more extra functions from the list that, for us to use. Uh, in order to print. We're actually using the for each method that using an iterator that's within this list. Uh, we won't go into that because it's a little bit more complex, uh, but that's the background as to why that works that way. 
And lastly, we can also use the anonymous function approach, which is if you remember how we had the function all in one line, we can do the same thing with our uh, list of for each. So we could do a for each x pass the return of print. And this is this is tiny. This is now a one liner where we are just printing each item in that list. Uh, and again, that's another sort of expression you'll see quite often. Uh, it does kind of abstract a lot of the complexity out and some people don't like that. Some people like to be able to see exactly what's going on with their code and that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you can also manipulate a list and then put items into another list. So for example, uh, say we had a list with these variables here. And we can use a functional approach for this as well, but we're gonna take another list of ints and we're gonna give it we're going to make a list of squares. So this is going to be a square of each of those values. So we're going to give a list dot, dot map x, x times x. So we're going to take each of the items in this list and then using the x, we're going to return x times x and put it into the list of squares. So then if we do, again, we use our functional method of printing out each item and do a for each x, print x. And we should end up with the square of each of these, or the squared versions of each of these values here. Which we do, 100, 400, 900. Now let's talk about maps. So we're gonna get rid of all the code in here. And we're gonna create a new map with a key of string and a value of an int. And our map is gonna be called cats. And basically a a map is a key value pair. So your keys on the left are associated with the values on the right. So if you pass in the key, you'll get the value on the right. So for example, say we had a cat named Piper and we wanted to store its age of two, we could simply write that. Maybe we had a cat named Tosca. Its age was two. And we had a cat named Felix, whose age was three. We could create a simple cat's map like this that stores the age of the cat based on its key, which is its name. So then we could do a print cats to give you an idea about what the map looks like. And you'll see we've got our three keys here. Now, if we want to access a specific key, so say we wanted to, say we wanted to print some details about Tosca, for example, we could do Tosca is cats. And then we're going to, this is basically similar to how we went to an array and we put a number, we're instead going to put it in the key of the value we want to return. So we want to return the value for Tosca, years old. And we'll get Tosca is two years old. Now, when you're actually inserting into a new map, you, uh, so when you add a new key value pair, if the key already exists, it'll be overridden. So for example, if we did a cats Tosca equals six and a cats uh, calip, so is equal to five, what we should see here is that we're gonna override Tosca's value and we're gonna also create a new key for Calypso, uh, which is equal to five. So then when we go into our print for Tosca is cats, oops, sorry, Tosca years old. Then we'll take this line, we'll make a copy. We'll take Calypso's name. And then we run this. We should see that Tosca's new age is six, even though we defined it as two up here. And we've also got a value for Calypso in here of five years old. And that's maps and arrays. So in the next video, we're gonna go through how classes work in Dart and how we can define a cat structure, for example. So I'll see you in that video.